Okay, I'm here at another abandoned mine right at the portal. You can see the daylight streaming in behind me. I'm here with Joe, Justin, and Todd. There'll be links to their respective YouTube channels in this video's description. Check out their videos. They got a lot of great content and their channels are growing. So please be sure to subscribe and uh, look forward to more of their outstanding content. Uh, there's a little bit of water in this mine. Just coming over the top of my foot, pretty much up to my ankle. But further in here, it does dry out. And we're gonna be climbing a lot of ladders in here today. So here's a timbered section just inside the portal. And once again, you can see here in front of me where my light is, that the water is indeed flowing out of the mine. That's a good sign in uh, mines that are flooded. Pretty cool timbering here. Look how these are all you know cut square pieces, but right up here they used a uh, a tree trunk right there. That's the only one that's like that. Yeah, you can really see the water here uh, flowing out of the mine, so that's a good sign. And then here's where. Here's where the timbering stops and we're into the mine proper. Here's an example of what they call cribbing in a mine where they stack up these timbers uh, crisscross style for support up there at the top. They call that cribbing. Uh, you see that often in, uh, in some of these mines. Uh, you see it every so often, and that's what that is. That back there looks like that might go somewhere. There's ore cart tracks, but we're going to stick to the main haulage tunnel this way. That looks like a dead end there. And here's another timbered section. So there's a shot looking back at the portal. And Justin. Okay, here's an intersection with some collapse there. Bottom of an ore cart. Just the wheels are remaining. That goes somewhere back there. And then we're going this way. Approaching another intersection here with the tunnel branching off to the uh, right. Here's a power station. Oh yeah, this is probably where all the power equipment was. Generators, all that kind of stuff. That's not the shaft, is it? That is. Oh, that is the shaft. Oh yeah, there's the vertical shaft. Here's the safety gate. Oh, this is the shaft you said was flooded. Look at that. Yeah, the water's coming up out of this shaft and is flowing out of the mine. So that is flooded clear to the top there. See that? It's going around that collapses not that way. Here's a break room over here. There's a picnic table up there where the miners would have taken breaks. And uh and some steps going up there into it. Check that out. And we're just looking back at the portal. Another power room here on the left. We'll keep going down the main haulage tunnel here. Finally dried out for the most part. A little bit of water there on the left, but not here in between the tracks. So So we're still continuing down the main haulage tunnel, but right here, notice this dark band right here, it comes up, goes over the arch in the tunnel and comes down here on the right. Justin was telling me this is a uh, shale, uh, a seam of shale, this dark brown rock. Otherwise the rest of the tunnel is this gray, this gray material, which I don't know what it is. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty wide. 
And we'll keep going down the main haulage tunnel here. Finally got rid of the water. So we're here, to, we're here at a Y split and there's a functioning ore cart. Missing a few pieces, but it still rolls on the, on the tracks. And more break room seating and then a tunnel branching that way to the right through that door. So we're taking the tunnel to the left here from that break room area at the Y junction. Check out this retaining wall here. Um, looks like right here is a little bit of damage um, right here. But look at all that rock that's being held up by this retaining wall. So right here is some miners graffiti. And check this drawing out. It looks like a, uh, a Native American riding on a, I'm assuming a horse, I think. But uh, we got a name here. Uh, somebody Garcia. No date though, I don't see a year. Miners always left their names and dates in the mines. Kind of cool to see that because some of them date way back, sometimes over a hundred years. Okay, approaching a intersection here. Looks like we're going to the right. That's where everybody else is. See the track switch. See what's over here. So this was uh, an explosive storage locker, and a lot of these paper fragments on this table are are from explosives, you know, um, inside the boxes and stuff, and they date from 1918 and dates like that. So, uh, but no explosives though, no dynamite, no blasting caps. They've all been removed. So we'll head back out here to the main tunnel and see where everybody went uh, down this way. I guess we'll maybe check that right branch on the way back or these mines are just so massive that, you know, there's a lot to see. Can't see it all in one trip. Just came from that way where the explosives locker was. And yeah, that tunnel that was on the other side is right here. So it just comes out right here. So we're not missing anything. Two sets of work cart tracks. Don't see that very often in these mines. I think I've only seen it one other time in like 14 years. Here's a track switch for the tracks right here. Still in place. So we came to this room and check this out. Here is a mucker on the tracks. There's the scoop. That's pretty cool. Rare to find these inside these mines. Here's a, I thought was a, a hoist, but it's not. It is a drill sharpener. Um, that's what Justin was telling me. I don't know how it operated. Maybe they, um, I don't know how it worked, but it looks like a hoist, but it's a, it's a drill sharpener. Never have seen one of those in an abandoned mine. And then here's more power. Power control stuff. Here's some drill steels stored here on these racks. More miners graffiti back there. Jose L. something, can't read the last name. 1926. May 1926. And here's, this is an incline shaft. Yeah, it goes down a ways, but you look, there's stairs. Yeah, here's an incline shaft. It's flooded. It, instead of a ladder, there was a staircase in the ore cart when it came up here. Let me zoom in on that flooded area. Yeah, we're not going down there. 
and check out these uh, pipe fittings here right at the top of this incline shaft. A bunch of them just hanging here. And the tunnel goes this way. And we just came from that way. Okay, that's the way we came from. We took a detour there to the right and we're in that control room where the incline shaft was, which is right there, and just came back out into the main tunnel, which just continues this way. So down here, this little short dead end passageway are two ore chutes. Uh, this is Ray's 9,122, and uh, it's clear, it's empty. See, that goes way up into a stope, probably turns vertical up there. And then next to it here is a ladder that the miners would have used to get up there. Yeah, you can see the ladder up there um, turns vertical right there. So then this chute is, is totally blocked with rubble. It's a massive chute. And these dots you see right here at the end of the tunnel, those are miners dots. They, uh, I guess every dot was a, was a uh, cartload of ore. That's how they kept track using dots. And some miners graffiti, somebody's name. I saw his name earlier in the mine. But yeah, so we'll head back out here to the tunnel and see where everybody's at. More miners graffiti, check this out. That's kind of cool. Looks like that's a miner there and someone's running in front of him and maybe that's a dog or a cat, a miner's cat. So we found this vein of some really colorful minerals, a lot of dark blue. Justin said that's azurite and a lot of pyrite in there as well. But yeah, it's pretty spectacular. It's a deep dark blue in some spots. We're continuing deeper into the mine and uh, tunnel curves here to the right and then to the left. A lot of miners graffiti through here. One of these red explosives lockers. Next to a big ore chute. More miners graffiti, 1928, 1916. Here's a split. Why split? I believe you could seriously get lost in this mine. I've only been in one other mine that was like that. That was the Lincoln mine up by Rachel, Nevada. This one, I believe, is the same way. If you didn't keep track of your route, you could easily get lost. Alternate escapeway through this door. I mean, there are just branches going off everywhere, and it's multi-level too, so. So we just came from that way, and here is one of these side tunnels that they dammed there and uh, put some pipes and valves in. They stored water back here. They must have broke into a flooded part of the mine or an underground aquifer that flooded the workings. And so they installed uh, this wall to hold back the water. It's actually made out of bricks. See that? And. Uh, there's some of the valves down there. Here's a bigger one up here. And then something up there. But a lot of graffiti here from the miners. They put their names here. I see 1921 is one of the dates. But yeah, it was a source of water for the mine. But we're gonna continue 
and we're going to go down here and climb some ladders way up into some other levels. Okay, so we're climbing these ladders to an upper level, about 100, 150 feet of ladders, something like that. Uh, here's an ore cart without wheels. Well, the tracks stopped there, so we got to go up, up into the stope, I guess. Oh, check that out. Here come Todd and Joe. Up the ladder. <laughs> 